Hi, and welcome back to Casa de Bon Temple for installment number three of my mentor text, Mo Williams. The book I'm going to be discussing today is Let's Go for a Drive. It's a story about a pig and an elephant who decide they want to go for a drive. They have a plan and they gather everything they need so that the drive can be successful. However, and spoiler alert, neither of them have a car and neither of them know how to drive, so their plans go awry. I think this book could be used in a classroom in a couple different ways and has some value. Number one, for a writing lesson, I think it would be great um, from the standpoint of punctuation. Uh, within the book, you see a lot of excitement, so there's exclamation points. There are question marks, there are commas, periods, hyphens. So I think you could use this in the classroom to have your students try to write just a simple story. However, try to use all those different aspects of punctuation in their story and then make sure that they know exactly what they're used for, how they're used and where to put them. So from a grammar standpoint, I think it would be pretty valuable. Another way that I think would be valuable in our classroom, especially in the middle schools, which is where I'm at right now, uh, students seem to not be able to follow through uh, via a sequence of events. In one of my math classes, we started to talk about sequence of events, and I did a little experiment. I pulled out a cart. On the cart, I had a loaf of bread. I had some peanut butter, jelly, butter knife, paper plate, and I asked the kids, show of hands, how many of you think you could very easily tell me how to make a peanut butter and jelly sandwich? Well, they all raised their hands and they all thought that they could do it. And I explained to them that what we want to do here is follow a certain order and sequence of events in order to complete this peanut butter and jelly sandwich successfully. So I started to ask students, what's the first thing we do? And they all yelled, get out some bread. So I tore the bread open right in the middle and pulled out two pieces of bread. And then I asked them, what's the next thing? And they said, put some peanut butter on the bread. So I took the jar of peanut butter and I smashed the bread completely. Well, they got a laugh out of it. And after a couple more errors, we were finally able to successfully make a peanut butter and jelly sandwich. Now at the time we were ordering numbers. We were actually ordering decimals from greatest to least, least to greatest. And uh, we try to explain to them that there is a way to do this properly, an order that you set up with your numbers in order to be successful. So I think this book could really be used in just about any grade school classroom uh, for just that. We're going to make a plan. We're going to put it in our notebook. We're going to follow this plan every time we have to solve a particular problem in our math class. I have found that most of the students that write notes effectively follow exactly those sequence of events as we order them in their notes, that when it comes time to do homework, quizzes, or tests, they really can uh, not only recall what they put in their notes and the specific steps they have to take to be successful, but in this particular math class, you're allowed to use your notes. Half the class or so takes valuable notes that they can refer to if they get stuck on a problem during a test, quiz, whatever. So. Again, I think that would be another really profitable way to use a story like this in the classroom. Make a plan. Don't make the plan something that's out of reach that you cannot attain. And then follow the plan. There's probably a myriad of other ways you could use this in the classroom, even from simple things like coming into the classroom and starting exactly the way you're supposed to. Sit at your desk, get out your planner, start taking notes off the smart board or whiteboard, whatever we happen to be using that day, and then follow that through every day. In middle school, we have kids that are very irresponsible. Um, a great number of them are. They don't know how to follow an order uh, coming out of grade school, K through fifth grade. So now here they are in sixth grade, and we're expecting them to be responsible and follow a certain sequence of events, yet they don't have the tools. So this would be another good place, beginning of the semester, pull out a silly little book about a pig and an elephant going for a drive, but not able to really succeed in their plan because they haven't thought it all the way through. So until we meet again, I'll be back.